Nothing is as important as trying to prevent the loss of life and indeed trying to free the hostages and you could argue that if we're going to discuss the propaganda war, the fact that uh, Hamas has released a video last night showing three hostages, uh, two of whom are in their 80s, one is 79, all abducted on October the 7th, talking about the difficult situation in which they're being kept. But there is, as that video shows, and it takes up the front page, most of the front page of the Times newspaper and is in all side, pages inside as well of other papers, there is undoubtedly a propaganda war to be had here. That's why Hamas is releasing that video. That's why, as much as Israel can, it seems to. Yesterday, it was the video and the photographs of the tunnels. Were you able to see that? It really is almost, and I don't say this with any levity or brevity whatsoever, it is almost like the London Underground down under in Gaza. Hundreds of kilometres of these tunnels. But how important is the propaganda war, which I would argue Israel would appear to be losing? Those calls, international calls for a ceasefire growing... Israel targeted a refugee camp with a set of overnight airstrikes that are reported to have killed at least 110 people. This was hours after being accused of terrorism caused by the Pope. Now, Israel, for the most part, remains steadfast in its commitment to wiping out Hamas and a continuous bombing and campaign of bombing in Gaza. To Fleur Hassan Nahum, who's deputy mayor of Jerusalem and Israel's special envoy for innovation, who joins me now. Thank you for coming on, deputy mayor. Um, if you look at figures that are put out by Hamas that uh, 20,000 people now have been killed in Gaza, is this still a case of self-defence for Israel? Good morning. Morning. Well, unfortunately it is, and I'll tell you why. The Hamas leadership, you don't have to go much further than them, have said again and again that October 7th is just a dress rehearsal, that we're going to continue to do this. So we're not just talking about numbers on one side and another side, and I said that about something about that in a second. It's about a threat that continues, which to Israel is an existential threat, because these people don't want to meet in the middle. These people have in their charter that they want the complete destruction of the state of Israel. How do you start a negotiating position with people who actually want to destroy you? So that's the first thing. The second thing is the numbers that you're talking about, the numbers everybody uses, are numbers that Hamas come out with. I, and I we know that, that they can't really be relied on. I'm not saying there haven't been thousands of of uh, of dead but they don't talk about combatants in these numbers which is funny isn't it they don't talk about no. combatants and can we really rely on the numbers of Hamas when Al Shifa hospital was supposed to have been our attack and 24 hours later it was but, discovered to be to be an attack by themselves by the but, Palestinian Islamic Jihad the numbers went from 500 to 26 so can we really de trust their numbers but deputy mayor what we can know for fact is that there is growing concern whether it's the head of the catholic church the pope whether it's the British Defence Secretary, his German counterpart, or indeed the French uh, Defence Secretary, equivalent Defence Secretary, they're all talking about a ceasefire. Why is it falling on deaf ears, do you suppose? It's not falling on deaf ears. If a ceasefire... Well, there was a strike meant, last night that killed 110 well, well, people. Well, let me tell you, what does a ceasefire mean? If a ceasefire means the return of the hostages and the dismantlement of a genocidal regime that has stated that they're going to attack us again then everybody would be in favor of a ceasefire. But if a ceasefire means that we're just going to keep them quiet for a bit until they attack again, then it's Israel's obligation to defend its citizens and destroy that threat, don't you think? Why is it necessary, it would, is reported, to start shooting, having snipers outside a church? I don't. I saw the reports this morning. Um, the church, there are no churches in Gaza, so I'm not quite sure where the report well, is, is, is there's, talking a, about. there's a Catholic church in there, isn't there? That is. Yeah, unfortunately, the... there are no Christians because they were dry, dro drove, driven out by. Well, there some are, Catholics. respectfully, there are Christians because I spoke to an MP yesterday who has family members in the church who are Christians. Well, I don't uh, know what happened. I don't know who was attacked. I didn't see the report. But the problem that we have is you... that Hamas is very, very good at embedding itself with civilians, using civilians. Many of the civilians came in on October 7th, attacked and raped and actually took back some of the hostages. Many of the hostages are being held by these innocent civilians. So I really don't know the precise case of what happened at the church. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of tragedy and mistakes that happened in a war that the, the Israeli army killed three hostages by mistake two days ago. Do you think that doesn't hurt our country? I, well, I think, Do you think I mean, anybody's just, happy about this? No, Did well, anybody want this war here? Pope, when Pope Francis says, 
unarmed civilians are the objects of bombings and shootings. This happened even inside the Holy Family Parish complex. When, when will Israel take note? There's, there's a big difference between deliberate killing of civilians and the unintentional killing of civilians in the middle of a horrible, ugly war we did not start and we did not want. And what the, the other side are using, and this is why they're winning the propaganda war, because people have very little historical context. And the Nazis also use this defense, the Dresden defense. Oh, well, the British killed so many innocent Germans. It's okay that we started the war and we killed all those innocent people. It's a big, big difference legally and morally between unintentional killing in the middle of a horrible war that we didn't want and we didn't start and the deliberate killing of innocent civilians. I just felt I had to call you because you're talking about Israel losing the propaganda war. Hmm. Who's actually promoting the propaganda? It's the media. You have, well, you both, have very, both, very articulate Israeli spokespeople coming on the TV, coming on the radios, talking to people, explaining to people what's going well, on. And every... Sorry, I've just got to finish because yeah. I'm on a roll here. Okay. Um, everything that comes out of Israel has to be verified. Yeah, everything that's said by Hamas, yes, you say that the figures are from the Hamas medical, you know, the health, health authority or whatever, yeah. but it's not verified. No, I even, always say that. Even what the Pope has said uh, over the last couple of days has not yet been verified. And everybody... I'm, I'm sorry, what, what, what has not been verified? I mean, I well, found yes, it extraordinary. Died. Did, yes, did, did yes, you unfortunately, not... mm. unfortunately, two women were shot, yes. but it's not categoric who actually shot them. But and did you not do... find it extraordinary that the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem and the nation's special envoy for innovation didn't know there were churches in Gaza? Well, I, I and, can't And she actually told me comment. that... Well, I you know, you said, well, what... respectfully, you said, that every, you, know, you said that much of what comes out of the Israel side is articulate. Well, I've just spoken with a fairly senior politician in Jerusalem who didn't, when you're seem, speaking to know, to the... sorry, please, who didn't seem to know there were churches in Gaza, which I, I found rather extraordinary. Well... That's part of the problem. What, the why thing is, that is part when, of the problem, Leslie? Well, because because you don't know you don't know what's actually in Gaza. Well, Do you know what's in Gaza? I, Nobody seemed to know I, that there were tunnels I've, in Gaza. I've, I've when, seen Gaza when, from about twenty kilometres. I've not been into Gaza. Well, um, I've but seen I'm, Gaza from twenty yeah, kilometres. Okay, but let me just but, finish with this. Okay, but I'm going nobody to take believed, what the Pope. Leslie, nobody I'm going to take believed, what the Pope says. Well, because he's not there either. He's listening to to one of his colleagues in Jerusalem. The, people die in wars. It's, it's called a fact. the Holy Family Parish Church. It exists. Okay, and it for exists. you to say I, that everything is articulate, she didn't even know it existed, Leslie. Okay, you're not letting me finish what I was going to say. I'm, I'm talking so about people. Is that okay? I'm talking about the representatives of Israel that are talking about how the war is being conducted. Okay, she yes. she's the mayor. And what I also find quite extraordinary is that. At the moment, Israel is a, you know, it's a tiny country because I know that you've been there. Have, yes. It's a country that is still traumatised, not only from what happened on the 7th of October, which is just something that's never happened in Israel. You know, in Israel at the moment, they're dealing with rape victims. They're dealing with families that have been traumatised by what happened. I and agree. actually, the whole country is traumatised. They're agree. dealing with families of fallen soldiers. But, but lastly, Leslie, lastly, Leslie going in the face of what would appear to be growing international concern, that's not going to win Israel any allies, is it? No, but, but, but Nick, you misquoted what David Cameron said. Everybody jumps S on the bandwagon. Sustainable and knows... ceasefire is what he wants. Yes, no, he didn't say that he, he wants a ceasefire now. He said we need to work towards a ceasefire. Do you not think that Israel wants to stop this war? Do you think Israel wants every day no. to lose young boys of 19, 20, of 21. Of, of course they don't. But the only way this war is going to end is if Hamas surrender, the leaders surrender, and the hostages are returned. And, it's and Leslie, that's where I must leave it. Thank you.